All right, so we're here at La Mesa RV, uh, West Sacramento. This is one of the biggest, most beautiful RV stores in the country. So this is the Storyteller display area being constructed. I think it's gonna look spectacular when it's done. And we have some Storyteller modes here, and I kinda wanted, in the last video, if you remember, we were at RVX and the vans were new, and I really hadn't been in them. I knew what the features were, um, but I really didn't know What's, how some of those things would impact the experience of riding in it. So since then, I've had the chance to drive a mode all over the country. We camped in it a bunch of times, and I sort of have figured out like really, what, what is the benefit of some of those features? What is the point of this battery? What is the point of all these individual things? And how does the experience change? And what are the implications for doing what it's supposed to do? The Storyteller mode is supposed to be daily driver meets weekend warrior, four season off-grid camper with four wheel drive. So let's take a look at it and I'll show you some of the things that I like, point out some things that I would add to the van maybe to for, for my lifestyle and uh, we'll go from there, come on. All right, this is the 2020 Storyteller Mode 4x4 and they have them in stock here at La Mesa and because it is a actual certified RV. That means this thing is gonna qualify for 20 year financing and you can write off the interest of a second home and you can insure this vehicle like an RV. So there's some neat things that happen on the outside. As you know, we always use the shortest wheelbase Sprinter. And what that means from a practical standpoint is it goes into any normal parking space, which is great. It's bigger on the inside but uh, pure physics tell you it is not going into a parking space. So if you want to pull into a bank or you want to pull into a restaurant or you need to get to CVS, this, there's no drama around this vehicle because it will simply go into the parking space. You go in like a regular civilian, do your business and you can leave without a lot of thinking about parking across the street and walking over. Now you, with that, you do compromise a little bit of space on the inside. I think Storyteller's done a pretty good job. It's 35 cubic feet of packing every millimeter of something that actually adds value to the experience. So let's look at a few things. Let's just look at the outside real quick because uh, you get an idea of what you've got. So four wheel drive, uh, that means you get a six inch lift. We have some custom rims that look pretty good and everybody's really happy with. They're low rated, way higher than uh, the factory wheels. In there, that is the, of course, stock Mercedes suspension. And as we were talking about a little bit before, we have also experimented um, with a full Fox suspension, which is a great thing. The factory can't add it, but it is something available on the aftermarket, which is really neat and adds a ton of value in terms of uh, braking and turning and uh, ground clearance, um, but also just makes the vehicle feel a lot lighter. It's really, really planted like this, but it's super planted um, with the upgraded suspension. One thing of Mercedes, this is a 2019 Mercedes chassis and it's a 2020 uh, Storyteller. And they really did a job, I don't know, we may see this better on the inside later, but they really did a beautiful job with the current generation Sprinters around the steering wheel and the controls. It has full 360 cameras, bird's eye view cameras, uh, adaptive cruise control. It has every safety feature and they did a lot of interesting stuff around the sort of electronic sway control for like if you're in a crosswind. There's electronics that will take over. Mercedes has really stepped up their game in terms of the fit and finish and the sort of luxury side. Because, you know, always remember with these vans, John, it was originally designed to be a work truck. You could be a painter or you could be FedEx or Amazon. And this is the same basic van. So they did a really good job of making the inside more luxurious, which really works to our benefit. There is a front runner roof rack, and we can look at that in a minute. I think I showed that in the last video. And a ladder, I didn't realize how good this ladder was compared to some other ladders I've been on in some other campers. It's super beefy. We use a, this called a smart plug setup, which is a really advanced high-end uh, shore power cord. I didn't use it that much in any of my camping because in, in my scenario, you know, we, there's a second alternator in the van and that second alternator charges the battery when you're driving. So generally when I pull up to a camping space or to a parking lot or wherever we're sleeping, there is full power and I don't need to be at a campground. You can be at a campground and use their power. 
but generally you just run off the diesel. And when the van's running, the battery's charging. But we happen to use a very high end, made by Smart Plug, super high quality shore power cord. And they keep them charged here because they're leaving the lights on all the time in this showroom. Over here is the city water connection. So if you were at a campground, you would simply use their water, right? And you just use it like a regular hose. But if you were filling up your fresh tank, which is, it sits inside of the van, but it sits right over the wheel here for weight management. Your freshwater tank, you simply plug it in here and fill it up. So it's a very simple setup. Here's the flare. I think it's four inches on this side. Of course, in the mode, you sleep sideways. So on the inside of here, you see how it tapers in, John? So at the very back, I think it's about uh, six foot four across for sleeping. And at the very front, I think it's six foot two. It tapers in a little bit for sort of aerodynamics. Right now, uh, one of the things we learned on the trip was how nice it's, it is to be able to be flexible and to move things around. And that really kind of speaks to the mode concept. So the idea is right now this van is actually in what's called work mode. This is the work surface on here. And what happens is it's really simple. Oh, by the way, while we're standing here, it's 5,000 pounds of towing. Um, I've towed a bunch with a Sprinter. We didn't tow on our particular trip, but it has a 500 pound tongue weight and it is 5,000 pounds of towing with a seven pin connector. So real quick, I'm going to show you oh, just while we're here, here's an outside shower. There's outside and inside showers, but here's your, here is your outside shower. Cargo lights, plugs, 12 volt. Got a nice rubber, rubber plug on there. Yep, and then breakers if you need to get to any of that, and there's breakers here. So very easy to get at. In this side, there are the low point drains and the plumbing that you can get at really easy. L track here for mounting anything. So this is sort of like a gives you flexibility. If you had a dog kennel, you could strap it down here. We have fit up to three 29 inch mountain bikes here with front fork uh, and front axle holders. So it just gives you a near infinite amount of places to strap stuff down. Right now, this mode is in the work mode. And so there's a work surface here with a starboard material. This is an antimicrobial easy wipe material where you could be working on cooking here or you could have a laptop or whatever reason. This is a work surface. When you're done in work mode, let's say you're getting ready to go. You're driving off. All you do is you simply lift it up and the, and the van is going to go into garage mode, right? So it's very simple and you have, you know, in a matter of a, of a few seconds, you have gone into work mode and this is garage mode. So, you know, I'm short, I'm only five foot, let's say eight. You can see how much room I've got above my head. You're what, six one? You got about two. Let me flip the camera around. Yeah. So I'm almost six feet, one inches. Yep. I'm not ducking at all. My hat scrape, scrapes a little bit on the air conditioner, but yeah. I'm not ducking. I'm not hitting my head. That's incredible. Yeah, so from a, from a camping standpoint, being able to stand up inside of your van is obviously a big deal. And when you're short, it's really good. <laughs> um, yep, so lots of nice cabinetry. Right in here are the, these are the window shades. And they're on magnets, and they simply uh, go up into each window. They use the magnets to go around the door, and they're full blackout shades full stealth. So they come with the van, of course. And when you get to your camp spot, the benefit is you throw them up. One, you've got better insulation. Two, nobody knows if you're in there and it is pitch black. So it's a really, uh, you get a very cozy feeling when they're up. So it's time for sleeping. You're done working. It's simply nice and easy. Drop this side. You drop this side down. There is a window here. So many times if you're just running the fantastic fan, you can have this window open. You can get as much airflow in there. I can't remember the CFM as it flows, but it's impressive. Plugs here, push button lights everywhere. And then I'm going to put this into bed mode, which is not very hard to do.
and there's your bed. So pretty simple. Again, that's about six foot four, I think, Why at the front. Why you lay on there? It's one thing to show it, it's another thing to sleep on. Yeah. So you can get a little idea. I'm, again, I'm not tall, but there's a lot of room up here. And it's a pretty comfy bed. Of course, the air conditioner is right here, which is nice because you can have it blowing on you. There's various vents. You can have it blowing down. You can have it back. You can have it blowing forward, which is pretty nice. So you and your daughter both slept on this space comfortably? We, we did both. So when I was with uh, my daughter, a couple of nights we slept together. And a couple of nights, uh, we, she would sleep on the Groove Lounge, which I'll show you here in a second. They're both pretty comfortable, but it just depends. There's hooks for things like garbage bags, you know, hooks over here. And by the way, it's... Machined aluminum or something like that. Yeah, they're nice, nice hooks. This is a port. The speaker's not in here, but there's a Bluetooth speaker here with USBs. Um, the, but the speaker would sit here and it's got a flashlight on it and it has a speaker. Uh, here you have the microwave. It's a little bitty microwave, but I think it makes 800 watts. And it is awesome for popcorn. We ate burritos everywhere, but we got the good burritos. We were like the Whole Foods uh, microwave burritos, which were awesome. Um, that's just a nice thing. You throw it in there and you've got a quick little meal. Cooktop. Sink. Which is nice for just washing up, brushing your teeth, all that kind of stuff. More plugs here. And I'll show you the fridge, which can be open from inside or outside, which is nice. If it's raining, you can access it just here, but it opens up all the way. So if you're outside, you can grab, a, grab something from the outside. It's 2.7 cubic feet, I think. So let me show you one of the neat things that Storyteller Design was, and I showed you the outside shower. But if it's cold outside or various other reasons, you might want to go inside. So this is called the Halo Shower System. It's kind of neat. Look over here, John. This is, this is the, uh, what we call the flex space. So you would, one purpose of it is you would step up. This is how you'd use it to step up and get on the bed. The other thing about it is that you can use it as a shower pan. Right? So that's a plumb shower pan. And we have 24 gallons of gray water underneath. Some people will use it as a cooler. They'll fill it with Cokes and ice and that will just drain out into the gray tank. But it also serves as a shower pan. The commode, which is the uh, portable toilet, sits inside of here as well. This one's still in the box, of course. Some people will set the commode if they want to use it. They'll set it on top of the flex space to use it. It's pretty good. I think you get like four flushes. It's full of water and you get four flushes. So it's, it's not too bad. But let's go back to the shower. So here's the halo system. Really neat because one of the things just while we're standing here <clears throat> is we really wanted to maintain, it's a little bitty van, again, 35 cubic feet. So how do you maintain an open airy feeling without claustrophobia? Yeah, and I think that sort of the design brief around this was, let's say you're showering for four minutes or you have two showers and that's like seven or eight, 10 minutes out of the day. Do you really need this big box that restricts you otherwise, right? It's just use of space and every pixel of this thing needs to kind of scream. So our guys came up with this uh, clever idea. They call it the halo system. And it's a very simple setup. You unroll it, you pull out the halo and here's your shower. Right? This is goes, it doesn't, uh, doesn't get on the floor because this is magnets all the way down and it goes into the shower pan. And what's kind of nice about it when you think about it is that the general motion of showering is like this, right? So if you're in a little box that can be a little cla claustrophobic with this, you'll sort of just stretch out inside of the, inside of the shower curtain. So it's, like I said, it's all on magnets. You go in here, you take a shower, the hot water for the shower, the inside shower and the outside shower and the hot water for the sink and the hot water for the cabin are all done by a diesel fuel fired heater. In this case, it's a diesel and it's under this uh, groove lounge, which I'll show you in a little while. So when you're done showering, you shake this off. It's 
a lot of times people will just run this fantastic fan, which will also help it dry off. And some people do it a little fancier than I do it. Super easy to do. We, we uh, most of the nights we were in like a national parks, so they had shower facilities, but so there you go. And then it's gone and it just looks like one of the cabinets. We've got this thing now and, and Jay and I did a lot of this because if you're just sitting there and if it's raining or you're playing cards, you, know, you can set it up like this to where you can see the other person and talk and you could eat a little here or play cards or work on your laptop. So this is sort of like the dinette mode, which you can get a lot of use of. Seats swivel very easily. Nice table here. When you're not driving, you just remove this and there's a storage place behind this seat here. So you'll see additional windows here, button lighting everywhere. Up here you have your control panel, which I'll show you in a second. But I want to show you this because this is kind of where you spend a lot of time if it's cold out or in the evenings before you go to bed. All right, so I want to show you the Groove Lounge, which I think is one of the most clever things that Storyteller does. It took a lot of testing and it took a lot of time to develop this, but I think it's pretty, pretty unique for the industry. And certainly when Jay and I were traveling, it was nice to have a place where you could lounge or if she didn't want to snuggle with me because she's a teenage girl, she would be down here. So they call it the Groove Lounge and what it essentially is, is a three panel bed or lounge. So it's not hard to maneuver. When it's up, it has two seat belts, shoulder belts. And the reason we can put these shoulder belts on is because we tested this uh, Groove Lounge to the FMVSS standard, which means they literally put chains at the top they put a chain in the middle and they put a chain on the bottom and they basically pull it to destruction. So uh, in our case, and the chains go out of the front and it's just a crazy process to watch how they do the testing, but it gives you peace of mind because you're putting your friends and loved ones and kids on these things and these shoulder belts and this system is rated to 15,200 pounds. What that means is if you could uh, imagine in your mind literally hanging two whole sprinters from the seat before it fails. That's a big deal in terms of safety and that tells you a little bit about what Storyteller does. So let me show you how it works. Right now it's obviously in the driving mode. You, you can bring this anywhere along here. Like if you wanted to, when this is down, you can lounge back and look at the beach, right? This panel comes off, right? So you can use it as like a lounge if, you, if all the panels were down. I'll show you that in a minute but you can lay it flat. Oh, by the way, inside of here, there is a safe for any valuables that you have. And under this is the um, heating system, the fuel fired heater it lives under here. And you'll see there's a port here where the air, the hot air comes out. Okay, so pretty simple. Reconfigure this side down. And there's your Groove Lounge. So you just went in a few seconds from a traditional bench seat to a lounge. And again, if, if the beach is out the back and you're looking out the back, you can raise up a panel to any height you want. You can put your feet up or you can do it the other way. You can groove on it. You can do whatever you want to do. I'll groove on this thing. Let's groove. Let's, you know, you can chill here. You can read a book. Um, or you can lay it all the way flat and go to sleep. So just, you know, there's, there's two seat belts here. It doesn't really sleep two. It really sleeps one. So that's how the, the Groove Lounge works. And it, it's, uh, it really gives you a lot of options. A uh, good amount of storage here. This is all like soft clothes. You know, this is not, this is a real furniture grade stuff. Generally not an RV grade, you'll see that. This is all soft clothes with really nice uh, uh, fit, fit, uh, hardware and fitment. Yeah, this is, these are actual wood drawers, no chipped wood. This is all hardwood stuff. We don't probably brag on that stuff like we should because we just think it's the right thing to do. I'll say this, we have spent a ton of time, we have an, uh, what we call an NVH task force at Storyteller and those are people who spend time on every van trying to make sure that there's no rattles and cracks and pops and I think uh, over time we'll become known as the guys who make the quietest vans. You're riding down the road and trying to make sure nothing's squeaking and popping. And that's a, it's a real trick, right? Because like we were talking about, every time you're rolling down the road with any camper, you are subjecting a home to hurricane, for, 
hurricane force winds and bumps and earthquakes and everything else. So there's going to be some flex in the chassis and you have to make some clever decisions about how you mount things and what kind of clearances you give them so there's no squeaking and rattling. None of them are perfect, but we're, we're spending a lot of time trying to make sure that these vans are quiet and comfortable to ride in. All right, so here is the um, sort of the control panel of your Storyteller. It's all very simple. So the Volta system, and you see Volta here, it's primarily this. This is your state of charge. That's like the gas tank for your battery. You used it constantly the whole time. There is zero sort of battery anxiety or range yeah. anxiety yeah. because you can simply fire up the van. The van has a second alternator under uh, that's attached to the main alternator. There's, it's just mounted in there and the uh, alternator as you're driving charges the battery pretty, pretty aggressively. Um, it's like an 8,000 watt uh, alternator and it's a 12,000 watt battery. So in an hour and 15 minutes, an hour and 20, an hour and 30 from all the way to zero, all the way up the battery is recharged. We never ran it all the way to zero. It has an enormous amount of energy in it. If you buy it from the fact that the standard Storyteller mode, you will have to monitor your own and you'll fire up your van and you can run it to recharge the battery. But there is an aftermarket solution for a high idle and remote start. When your battery gets to a certain level, the van will fire itself up, go to a high idle, and it will r run for an hour or until the battery is at 100. No, there's not a 110, but you would use that shore power cord, which is pretty common in any campground, and people have them at their houses too. That's right, and gotcha. you, can, right, you can do an adapter, that's exactly right. Now we'll say this, so there is uh, 100 watts of solar on the roof, and there's a port that allows you to hook up another 400 watts of solar. So you could get up to 500 watts on here. For me, I think it, I, my personal preference is just to simply to use the van for what we designed it for. It has the second alternator. It's nice. The battery, the, the solar does a great job of trickle charging, but it's kind of what it is that the, the diesel engine is so much more powerful and quicker way to charge the batteries. So, all right, so here's the Volta and it's simple. It's just a, a one button on, one button off, and it's a very, very uh, efficient system. Here you can, it's basically one main button you would press is this one because you can turn the inverter on or off and it's not doing it right now because it's plugged in outside shore power. Let's see, so this is your uh, the monitor around the tanks, right? Your tank monitors, there's 21 gallons of fresh water and I think 24 gallons of uh, gray water. And this should run through a little procedure here. And the fresh tank is 86% full, the gray tank is not full, and that's really all you need to know. So it's a very simple system and Let's see if we get, so we, we wanted uh, something as similar to your home as possible, right? So this is no big surprise here. here it's, it's got this air conditioner is on 56 degrees. It just fired up. And the vents are open. <laughs> yep. So. Wow. Well, it's blowing out some cold air. Yeah. This is the heat. I'm going to turn this off. And automatic, this furnace. We'll turn that off and that will shut off. This is the Rickson system, which diesel fired heater that's under the groove lounge. And what it does is it taps into the fuel tank, the diesel fuel tank, and it sucks very minimal amount of diesel and it heats the hot water and it heats the cabin. Super efficient and it's pretty simple. You put on system, you put on furnace, hot water. See how it's kind of the lights are blinking? That means it's firing up. It takes a little minute to kind of fire up. And it has to have a quarter tank for the okay. Rickson system to work, but I think it's firing up right now. It takes a minute for it to sort of fire up. Those lights will quit blinking in a minute. So then you can either use it by the fan, right? You can, it will blow hot air, or you can just use it for hot water. Okay. It's a pretty simple setup. And that is really it. I'm actually going to kill this and let it turn off. Turn this off, hot water off. That's basically the whole setup. That's really it.
This is the leg of the lagoon table. They call it a lagoon table. And it's just sort of an extrusion that allows you to kind of go up or down in this little dock here for different heights. And you can, you know, sort of move it around. So I think this side goes on here, if I'm not mistaken. Nice. This kind of goes down to where you want it. Yep. 